It smells like chicken in here. Cheers. California. Hello, everyone. It's Wednesday, somewhere in April. Sometime in April, somewhere in the world. That's not right. We're off to a bad start. <laughs> do this all over again. Hello, it's Wednesday, April 2nd. And yes, it's somewhere in the world. I'm in Montreal and I wish that snow would melt now, like right now. Like I wish, I yearn for grass and leaves in the tree. I have a tree in front of my window, right behind where you are. There are two big holes in the tree and there's little chickadees in there. And they sing when I can open my window because right now it's a little, it's a tad chilly, so I'm not going to open the window. Uh, but I hear them sing and oh, it makes me so happy and I want the snow to go. Okay, enough whining. Done. <sighs> Have you had a good week? Haven't talked to you since last week. I haven't been creating a lot for myself, so, but I do have one tutorial to show you. If you follow me on Scrapbook Central's YouTube channel, you will have seen kind of something very similar to this. Um, but I wanted to redo two pages in my own journal. And I'll, I'm just going to show it to you really quickly. Some of you might be familiar with this. Um, but I'm using different uh, a different surface to work on, and I used a different approach. Um, and I wrote a big long quote. Anyways, I wanted to redo it because I wanted to play with a ground for acrylic, which is a medium that you would put on a surface to make it more porous and to see uh, how the paint would react to um, the medium. And I really, really liked it. I liked it a lot better than the white gesso. The white gesso is too slick for me because I was uh, I used a lot of water I wanted to have watercolor effect with paint uh, white gesso was not the best thing for that so I'm very happy with how I ended up redoing this so and I um, I filmed this step by step so I'm gonna show you that in a minute but before I show you that remember I was talking to you uh, not last week I think the week before about this little girl, this nine-year-old girl, her name is Constance, and um, her and her mother come to the Mom and Me Crafts at the store. And she watches my YouTube videos, and she enjoys them a lot, and I had the pleasure of meeting her. And yesterday when I passed by the store, they told me I had something from her. I had this bag with a mini album that she made for me. And a card. Check the card. This is so cute. She's nine years old, guys. Um, she even uh, added some glossy accents on the wings. She wrote a cute little message inside. So basically what she says is, thank you for saying that my uh, projects are beautiful and um, I can't wait to see you. I love you, Constance. Seriously, it's so darling. And look at the album. Maybe I have it the wrong way. She wrote Merci Cici, which obviously means thank you Cici. And then she wrote Scrapbook Central underneath. So the first page, she painted hearts. And everything is like, she added gesso, she added washi tape at the bottom with, and she covered it up with, um, it's either white paint or gesso. And there's like a paper underneath, like she already is into layers. My kind of girl. Look at this one. I mean, she added stenciling with the, the damask stencil. She used modeling paste or molding paste, painted over it. Isn't that fun? And this one, this one's my favorite. Look at this! Look! So again, a stencil with a flower. She added a paper at the um, um, as a background and there's washi tape, and she painted over the modeling paste. I mean, isn't that darling? All right, I'm gonna to switch to French now because I wanna to speak to uh, Constance. Constance, un gros merci. Ton album est génial. J'adore toute la texture, les couleurs. 
T'as fait ça toute seule? Lâche pas, en tout cas. Puis j'ai hâte de te revoir. Kids are amazing. They're just amazing. They're so sincere when they speak and when they do stuff. This is from the heart, and I'll always treasure that. It's just amazing. So I guess I'm going to show you the tutorial now. Okay, so let's begin by prepping my paper. I'm adding a piece of masking tape in the middle because, as you can see, there's a bit of paint that seeped through uh, in the middle there, through the seam. So I prep my pages usually with uh, masking tape. The medium I'm going to be using today is absorbent ground for acrylics and this will sort of convert my very smooth paper into a very porous surface because I'm planning on using paint with a lot of water. This is not watercolor paper. I'm showing you here the two stamps that I've used. I stamped them in Jet Black Archival ink and as you can see I have missed. So I'm using a big brush uh, pit artist pen because it is waterproof and I'm just going over the areas that I've missed using the photos of the stamp packaging as a guide. I had a bit of difficulty because the grounds for acrylic leaves a very grainy surface and the pen was catching a little bit but um, so I just had to adjust my um, heavy hand <laughs> for a lighter touch. The stamps I'm using are by Donna Downey Studios, but I do believe they were created uh, with Stephen Larson's images. He's an artist that uh, teaches at Donna Downey's, and um, he's wonderful. I have learned last summer through him how to make eyes and nose and, and mouth, so he's a very talented artist, and if you have the chance to ever... Um, attend one of his class, do so, you won't regret it. So now I'm starting the coloring process. If you have watched uh, Scrapbook Central's video of last week, you'll uh, be familiar with what I'm doing right now. I'm essentially recreating what I did, but in a different way. Um, I'm not working on gesso. Like I said, I'm working on grounds for acrylic. Um, and I want to give a different feel to the image more of an aggressive feel I, I should say so that's why I decided to lay down grounds for acrylic because um, it captures the paint better it's more porous obviously than gesso and I found that the colors were dancing a little bit too much on gesso now at this point <laughs> I realized I had forgotten to use my stencils which I really wanted to do it's a different stencil than what I used on Friday but uh, it's in the same collection and I will list all of the um, supplies that I've used in my blog post and I'm going over that with this time light uh, molding paste which is my preferred molding paste I like the light one I find it's more fibery if there's such a word and um, it dries much faster and I like the texture that it leaves it's kind of like almost like fiber paste not as fiber not as much fibers but it's kind of like fiber paste so again my rule of three three different spots and now I can continue coloring so I'll tell you right now what the colors that I'm using so the magenta is quinacridone magenta the which is golden the uh, yellow is cadmium yellow medium hue that one is by Liquitex and I'm adding now um, Thalo Turquoise, uh, which is the rest are all golden paints. And then um, later on, I'll be using fluorescent pink and anthracrinone, anthracrinone, anthracrinone blue. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. So these are the colors that I'll be using. Um, you'll see later on, I will cover some of the colors that I've bled up top um, because I wasn't happy where they were going it was too far close to the edge of the page what I'm using the brush I'm using is a watercolor brush it's a big fat brush and I love it 
and I rinse my brush often in this uh, this new gadget that I have. It's called Rinse Well. It's great for watercoloring. You always have fresh color, uh, fresh water, uh, which is very important when you do watercoloring. You always need clean water. Um, of course, I started dripping because I can't not drip. I love dripping colors onto pages. I think it gives movement and um, what you see there on the right hand side where the on the lady to the right um, the start of the dripping with the blue is going to be sort of my main focus later on um, I'll be dripping on her bangs I guess her bangs will be dripped <laughs> Now, I, of course, sometimes you make boo-boos, and that long drip did not have a place, but you can always dab with a BB wipe. And uh, I use my heat tool to get rid of the water faster, uh, because this page is dripping. Like, there's a lot of water on this. So you don't see the stops, but of course, in between colors, I had to stop recording and let it dry or um, dry it with the heat tool. Again, as you can see, that drip on the right hand side on the nose was very persistent. Um, I'll end up covering it with white paint, which was a big mistake um, because the paint that I was using is golden. The surface I was working on is more of a matte surface and uh, the white paint made it shiny, so I ended up covering the white paint afterwards with white gesso, but I'm ahead of you guys. <laughs> um, so I'm just coloring the eyes now with just straight up paint. I'm not diluting too much. I'm mixing the two blues there. I'm mixing uh, actually tur uh, turquoise and blue, and then the lips are hot pink, fluorescent pink. And on the other one, I'm using the magenta. Um, as I've explained last Friday, I'm using, I'm leaving the faces white mostly because I want them to stand out. There's a lot of color on this. So, um, yeah. And uh, you see me focusing on that white uh, part there. I'm using white paint just to finish off the edges, if I can say it that way, or contain my paints to where I wanted them to go. Um, the first part, like the layering of the paint with water, is very free flow. I let the the water, I let the paint mostly do its own work. I let it go where I want, where it wants to go. It's very organic. And then I'm just correcting with some white paint. And you can see the reflection of the white paint up top on the left there. And I didn't like that. So um, off camera, I went over with white gesso. And I'm covering up that drippage on the nose. <laughs> It was bothering me. White paint or gesso is great for correcting some of the things that you don't particularly like, especially on a big piece like this. It's bound to happen, and that's fine. It's all part of the process. I love Stephen's faces. They're just, oh, they're gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So the girl on the left has poofy hair <laughs> and the one on the right um, has uh, very freakish bangs and that was intentional by the way. <laughs> that was probably the only part that was intentional in the whole thing. I wanted her to be very, uh, not aggressive, but very decisive, very um, in charge and you'll understand why when I start adding the quote on the right later on. So I'm finishing off with a bit of turquoise and dripping. The kind of brush that you use is um, very important. This one is perfect for the kind of um, organically shaped patches of color I wanted to, to give it. Um, this is white gel pen by Uniball. And I'm going to use it to outline some of the uh, colored sections. 
not too much but this just adds a bit of definition it adds a bit of interest it draws the eyes to the colors as well and it ties into with the face as well because the face is very white And now I'm going to repeat the same process, this time using a permeable black pen by Pilot. I know these are hard to find, so if you are lucky enough to get your hands on them, buy a whole bunch, please. <laughs> um, again, I'm going to highlight just certain areas. Obviously, the bangs are going to be prominent because this is part of the story I want to tell. And I'm going to keep it to a minimum on the girl on the left. And I'm just taking that uh, opportunity to go over some of the lines, some of the finer lines of the stamps with that pen. I love that pen. It writes on pretty much any surface. And now that I'm done with the black outlining, I'm writing a quote. It's a fairly large quote, and of course, I know I have texture down the road, but I am very determined, <laughs> and I will write my quote over that stenciled part. Now, let me read to you what the quote says, just in case you have a, a problem. Um, it's, a, it's a very wonderful quote by Amy Poehler, and it says, I want to be around people that do things. I don't want to be around people anymore that just, um, oh, that judge or talk about what people do. I want to be around people who dream and support and do things. I fell in love with that quote. I found it on Pinterest. And um, by the way, if you are at a lot for words for your art journaling pages. Pinterest is a great way to start and to find like the proper quote. I'm sure that you'll find something that is appropriate to what you are uh, intending to say. I have a whole collection of them on my Pinterest. So you can actually go on my Pinterest account and um, follow the quotes board. Now, because I was writing over texture and because I wasn't in love with my handwriting because of the surface I was writing on, I went over it just to make it even more ugly. Not ugly. <laughs> um, a great way to correct handwriting, I find, is to emphasize it and to exaggerate. And this I got from Joanne Sharp. If you exaggerate 
the things that you're not crazy about on your handwriting, they become, all of a sudden, they become whimsical and they make a statement. And it's your own handwriting. You should embrace it. Uh, I didn't mean to say ugly or anything like that. It's just that because I was writing on, um, like I said, a textured surface, heavily textured surface with a big fat marker, um, I needed to fix it somehow so that we could actually read the quote. And there was my process. It's very, very different. It's a little bit more messy than what I did for Scrapbook Central last Friday. Uh, it's the same stamps, basically the same techniques, uh, but I used different materials. I also included a very, very big quote. I knew I wanted to do that. Um, of course, I encountered a problem here in the texture, but all in all, I'm very happy with it. I like the patchy letters. I like I like the grunginess of this even though it's got happy colors so yes I'm done nope I lied I'm not done <laughs> there's too much black here totally unbalanced um, I'm going to add some I'm gonna drop some ink oh I hate doing that because I usually don't drop very well yeah and my drops are always big I'm really, really bad at dropping ink. I'm gonna leave them like that. It it somehow balances it out. The black on this side, now I have big splashes of black on that side, and that's... Yeah, I gotta go now. All right, so I hope that you've enjoyed that. I love those stamps. Uh, these are um, stamps that Steven Larson designed for Donut Downey Studios. I had the pleasure of um, attending a class with Stephen when I was uh, down in North Carolina and he showed us how to make gorgeous eyes and oh, his stamps are just amazing. Um, it was a joy to do that, those two pages. The quote is big, but I wanted it that way. I don't know what I was feeling that day, but I, I really needed to make a big bold statement. So the colors with the big black quote. I love that quote by Amy Poehler. Love it, love it. Anyways, I think I'm going to end this here because I really do need to go. And hopefully this weekend I will have some time to create for you. Um, I want to do some doodling. I feel like I ought to do some doodling because I haven't done doodling in a while. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll work in my uh, watercolor journal. Oh, remember in my last vlog, I asked you if you guys were interested in seeing my planner. There's a lot of people that said yes, they are interested. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still testing it out. I want to do the whole month of April. I just started this planner maybe the last week of March and it seemed to be working because on the days that I really don't have time to plan out my day for the next day, excuse me, I'm totally lost. And I feel like I'm not accomplishing anything. And as soon as I write everything down, I go boom, 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 one after the other. It's just amazing. So it seems to be working for me this time around. So, uh, but like I said, I want to test drive it for a full month. So the whole month of April, and then I'll do probably a review. I'm also looking for um, the proper binder because the binder that I have sits too large on my desk. So I think I'm gonna have to invest into either Filofax 
they're expensive. I'm sure there are other um, companies that are less expensive than Filofax because it's big money. But anyways, um, so I'm reserving that for probably in the month of May. But I will come back. Hopefully this weekend, like I said, I'll have time to uh, do a lot of fun, creative stuff. So that's it for today. I hope that you have enjoyed the tutorial. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you later. Bye! Is such a mess. Oh, come on, redo.